Welcome to the Houston YMCA. It's the men's round of 16 for the race for eight, season number two, stop number three. Chip Morales up against Aaron Garner. Aaron, the brother of Alan Garner, perennial top four, top three pro. At one time, possibly the number one player here in the United States. This is the brother of Alan Garner. Aaron now living in Portland, Oregon. Went to Portland State under the tutelage of the great coaching from Mike Steele, president of the United States Handball Association. Aaron has all the talent that Alan has, right, just cool. a matter of putting it together. A lot of people, Dave, see Aaron play for the first time, can't believe how hard he hits the ball with both hands. He's got that Garner Aaron, strength, and he also is very dedicated to working out. The guy's probably the strongest guy in the tour, even stronger than his brother. Yeah. Tells me he has to wear a 2X large shirt because his arms just won't fit into anything smaller. <laughs> All right, men's round of 16 action. Chip is serving first. You heard the announcement. Aaron will serve at the break. There was no a one in right four now, chance, David. Aaron could have pulled his brother's name out of the hat played Allen in the first round. Instead, he gets the lowest ranked guy in the top eight. Chip Morales, who comes in here, the number eight seed, he's ranked 11th, but we had no shows from three of the top 10. Therefore, Chip moved into that invited eight spot. And Dave, Chip will be losing some points here in this event. He had good finishes last year in Fresno and Atlanta. He'll be losing those points. If he does not, Dave, win this match, I believe he'll drop out of that Elite Eight ranking, possibly overtaken by John Iglesias. We'll have to see how those numbers crunch. Of course, the numbers crunch by a computer. We don't have that program running right now, though. Hold it. And Dave Chip does not look fit right now. Looks like. He's enjoying some Texas barbecue. He's a recent resident of San Antonio, maybe going back for zero, zero. a couple extra ribs here and there. See how it affects his play. Chip, like most athletes, Dave, plays his best when he's fit. We saw him playing his best last year, the beginning of the year when he was fit. Okay, I got one Early right. broken ball here. Chip had his breakthrough performance in Fresno where he took sixth place. Beat Charlie Shanks there and nearly beat Dave Chapman, then beat Chip. Emmett Peixote in the drop down. It was in my pocket, so it's a little wet. Has it was not pocket, really so had any great results drain. since then, Dave. He lost yeah. in the first round in Tucson to John Iglesias. No, one from down, from downstairs. Yeah, a new one. Yeah, it was, it was a warm-up ball. So basically, she popped it. This does lay one up too. This is the first broken ball of this okay, tournament. The last point. And it's no wonder that it happened with a garner on the court. Short ball. If you just tuned in, we apologize about the camera angles. The back wall has a white film on it to allow the players, when they look back, not to look into the sun from outside. Sort of like a, a tent, window tent, and it just looks very strange on our cameras, Dave, so we had to move everything upstairs looking down. It's more of the kind of a modified, or half of our broadcast from normal stops. Short. I actually enjoy the up top Second. angle, not so much the Kmart security cam angle. is actually 0-1, Aaron Garner with a point. These guys have traded side outs here throughout this first game, and that's a nice point. back wall kill from Chip Morales. Dave Aaron Garner's father, Jim, telling me one he one. thinks Aaron would be ranked right now in the top four if he hadn't taken so Good much play. time off. That time off coming from 
MMA training, also lost a little bit of interest in the sport for a couple of years. Now he seems to be renewed with vigor. He's now qualified for the first time on the Race Bray Tour after three attempts. Did nearly have a breakthrough, Dave, at the USHA Four Wall Nationals, where he won game number one and had a big lead in game two to advance the round of eight. Wasn't able to close out that match, so he didn't earn any ranking points for losing in the round of 16 there. He also traveled all the way, Dave, to Ireland. He was one of the few elite players from the United States that wasn't actually on the race break team and said he just laid an egg there. Felt like he was playing well before coming into the event. And it didn't translate into good play Second. on the court. Well, he ran into a buzzsaw in his opening round. I believe that was Killian Carroll. Now that kid's going to be a top pro. That ball hits. Point. Check it. Aaron in the shorts as it comes across the middle. Those players that like to wear those baggy shorts, that's what you you face when you try to jump to get out of the way. The shorts don't always go with you. They kind of stay for a little bit. Short. Second. just missing out last season, Dave, on qualifying for Seattle. He was the alternate. He was on site in Seattle, but not on play the court. Screen, sorry, play screen. I saw you look up, Jeff. Did a lot of work for the WPH that week night, weekend, keeping the stats. He said it really motivated him, Dave, this season Short. to try and break into that Elite Eight so he can be actually not only at Seattle, but participating Second. on the court. Well, it didn't motivate him enough because he decided not to enter the U.S. Open, which carried double points, and because of that, he probably is statistically unable to be in Seattle. As an invite, if he would have played and maybe won a couple rounds, he probably could be getting or defending a chance to be one of the invites at the Players' Championship, depending on how well he would have done at the U.S. Open. Now, he played doubles there and lost out on a big opportunity to have a lot of points. And if he loses in this round, you'd have to say that his season's pretty much over. He'll be playing just for pride and some cold hard cash. But so if he loses this match here, Dave, he would literally need a couple of finals appearances. He might have to be a alternate again. Well, Chip is sort of an anomaly, Dave, this season as he's an invited eight pro at two consecutive stops, yet with virtually no chance of qualifying for Seattle. 272. And he's probably going to lose some big points because of how well he played in Fresno last year. Well, that's true. He loses 3.5 points from Fresno and also 1.5 points from Atlanta. So that's a five-point total, which is about half of his ranking points. Wow. So, you know, you talk about five points, maybe not that big a deal when you consider Sean Lenning with 79, but these guys fighting for that Elite Eight status, five points is huge. That's the difference, Dave, between being ranked eighth and twelfth. A lot of stature that comes with that top eight ranking also. And Chip and I don't just mean the media requests. Strangely, Chip is actually invited to Alaska. Mm -hmm. And if not for that kind of strange schedule that we have and format, Chip would have had to qualify probably for Alaska. So he gets another freebie. Yeah, the free lunch though will stop for Chip two, two. after Alaska, unless he does win Alaska. We're all together at two here. That ball broke. Talking to Alan okay. Garner, Dave, who's been sparring with Chip, I said, you guys must really be playing well, pushing each other. He said, no, actually, I'm playing about as bad as I've ever played. Well, yeah. Seems to think Because you're playing an elite player, so you find well, out how good you... Maybe he's playing too much. He's just yeah. mentally not really there, and that happens. He said he played better when he was just playing once a week and really cross-trading hard. But Alan Garner didn't look great today, Dave, against John Iglesias. We'll see if he's just working himself into this event. When you play against an elite player, 
a lot of the times you think that you're playing bad, but it's really they're playing good and they're just better than you. And that's just the way it is. Thank you. Alan Garner has a way of making players okay, feel like they're point. playing bad. Two, two. Well, Alan Garner also saying that he's playing badly. <laughs> so. Point. And Dave Chip struggles with the Z serve return to his left hand. He's one of the only guys in the top eight that really doesn't have a great answer for that Z serve. And there's the announcing point. curse oh, sorry. as he kills that shot about an inch high with his left hand off Two, the side three. wall. Point. That's really Chip's equalizer, Dave. When he gets that serve going, three, he's three. one of these top guys that can serve aces down the right and left. Side out. Three, three. Stream ball, stream ball, stream ball, stream ball, stream ball. Stream ball. This shot. Three, three. Point. Yes. It's four to three here with Aaron Garner. And Chip going back and forth, back and forth. A lot of side outs, a couple broken balls already. We haven't had a broken ball in the whole Four, tournament. And we've already broke two in this match and we've only had seven points scored. Replay. The Z serve, Dave, can be very effective into that left corner because there is that glass box in the deep left corner where there recreational go, players might put their wallet or extra ball. And since we don't play erratic bounces here, you can play the ball off that window, get sort of a funky Three, dead four. bounce. Three. Chip trying to push the roof up here. Well, you're going to have to be in good shape to win this match because if you the style of play that Chip is Point. engaging in right now, longer rallies, not serve and shoot because he's not serving. Five, three. He's going to get wore down if he's not in top shape because Aaron Four. is in top shape and he'll just keep running all day long. So you have to put the ball away Second. here. I don't necessarily like Dave seeing guys really pump themselves up early Replay. in a match because you can't win the match in the first 10 minutes. Sometimes you expend too much adrenaline and energy pumping yourself up early. You go flat in the middle and later stages okay. of the match. And that's when you really need it. You see all the great athletes, they've seemed to know just how to pace themselves throughout a match starting on more of an even keel and then gradually ratcheting up the intensity and having something in the tank for late in the match should they need it. Side out. Three, five. Dave, I know you're a great student of the, of the game as we see a great serve return kill from Aaron Garner. Have you seen a bigger upset in pro handball Five, history three. than what we saw early this morning with no. Anthony Celesto? So no, that was a very quick response. No, but if, like we said before it happened, mm. and John Bike said this yesterday, if I were, I if it were me, I would have rather have landed, uh, have lost to Anthony 
than to beat Anthony because the only chance I have to beat anybody in the round of 16 is against Sean. That was from John Pike, who said that yesterday, not even knowing what condition Sean's in, because Sean is susceptible to losing. He does, I mean, he does go to tiebreakers a lot. We saw the bid against take him to a tiebreaker. Uh, you know, it can happen. Well, you know, we say Sean is susceptible to losing, but he never actually does lose. This time, he was on the verge, and it actually happened. Like you said, he was down 8-4 in the tiebreaker to Brant Bidigan, or excuse me, Briar Bidigan at the Nationals, came back and won. We've seen him in tiebreakers with other players that you would think wouldn't even be competitive with him, but this time, Dave, he's on that fine line and ended up on the wrong side of it. As we mentioned earlier, the only player that had ever defeated Sean in a traditional race event was Luis Moreno. He's never lost to Alan Garner, Nadia Alvarado Jr. <laughs> That's or any of the guys in a race event. Isn't that interesting? Seven, three. Well, now there's two. Luis Moreno and Anthony Celesto. Please play talking today to Adam Bernhardt who lost in the qualifier final and then lost again today to Nadia Alvarado. He said he's going to try and make some stops this year. 7-3. He, he's a great guy to have on the tour. Beautiful corner kill right there with power from Aaron. Timeout, Chip. That's your first. The score is 8-3. Timeout from Chip Morales. We're also going to take a timeout. We'll be back in just a bit. Stay here at racerate.com. It's Timothy Green's first day at school. What's in there? He's well, about to fall over. Anything he might need. There's a box of tissues on the bottom and some band-aids. There's a whole first aid kit, actually. Mom, I can handle it from here. You don't have to be perfect. Have a great day. That's too much pressure. Have the day you have. To be a perfect parent. There are two people in the world who want you more than anything. They'll make some mistakes, but they will love you more than you can ever imagine. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. My name is Bruce Fabrizio. In 1975, I invented Simple Green based on three principles. It had to be safer to use, it had to work, and it had to be completely made in America. From generation to generation, Simple Green has been cleaning everything from car engines and tools to kitchen counters and floors. No matter what you clean, indoors or outdoors, clean it with non-toxic, biodegradable Simple Green. We are back in action now, round of 16. Chip Morales pumping himself up, taking a timeout, coming back in and getting the serve. Well, this is, Dave, a danger zone for Chip because we've seen him get down early and sort of start with the terrible body language where it seems like he just doesn't feel like he can win. Right now, he's trying to compensate for that tendency by overly pumping himself up. Now, he's got to remember, Dave, he's got 22 points to the finish line Eight, four. and he's already expending a lot of energy a lot of people say well it's just one game to 25 but you have to understand it's more like a hundred yard sprint so even though you've only run a hundred yards you're still exhausted at the end of it you pace yourself differently in these matches just like Nine, four. you would if you ran a 10k compared to a hundred yards you'd be tired at the end of both Short ball. Aaron looks a lot more relaxed today than he did yesterday. I think getting over that hump, huge for his confidence. Beating Vic Perez, who's a very high quality player. And Dave, this is what 
This is why the Race Parade Tour was created, Dave, to showcase not only the best players in the world, but the up and coming players who are soon to become those elite players. These guys like Aaron Garner and Anthony Celesto and Vic Perez, these guys that now, Shorty Ruiz also, Dave, these guys Four nine. are aiming and setting goals for themselves to reach the perch of well, pro handball. John Bike having a conversation with me earlier when you were out of this booth said that it was an exciting time for handball. Five nine. I agree with him because yeah. these young guys, and you can no longer put Chip Morales in that, you know, claiming he's a young guy, he's in his 30s. and you know, you, But you can look at the Anthony Celestos and there's other players like Blaze Celesto, even his own brother, and the Bidigans, and, and Aaron Garner. Brother of Allen here playing top ball, and, and then you look at John Iglesias, who's you know had potential for the last six years. Side out. And Sean Lenning's only 26. <laughs> Just turned. Well, Dave, I think those guys that you mentioned Nine that five. aren't even at this event are going to see these results and be motivated themselves to start coming to some events. Point. Don't forget, Dave, we've got guys in New York that are really top-level players, not only in one wall, but four wall as well. Tyree Bastidas, Mike Schneider, Billy O'Donnell, Jarrell Bastidas. These guys are all qualifier-level players. We could, Dave, Five have ten. an under-25 tournament that would be just about as exciting as any event you could hold. Dave, what it really does is it just contact, furthers contact, the mission contact. of the WPH to promote handball through innovation and inspire all those young and okay. up and coming junior players as well as juniors yeah. that haven't even started to play yet. Seeing the pros, developing idols and setting goals. Not only on the handball court, Dave, but in life as well. Okay, here we go. Cool. Here we go, guys. Here we go, guys. Nice get. Five, serving ten. Some chatter in there now between not only Chip and the referee, but Aaron Replay. Garner as well. And Aaron, Dave, Replay. just fires a ball out. right into Chip's backside. And then looking up at the referee, Five, I think ten. he won an avoidable there. And Chip gives Aaron two huge back wall setups in a row on the serve. Ten five. And Dave, you talk about Anthony Celesto had never qualified before, and then he breaks through by beating Point. Sean Lenning. Now Aaron Garner had also never qualified before. He goes on to win this match. He faces Anthony Celesto, so we're going to have some sort of first. We're going to have either a qualifier for the first time making the semifinals, or we're going to have a guy that's never qualified, who's already made first today, qualify and make the semifinals. Good point. So we're in for a first should Aaron Wint Garner win this match, which it looks like he will right point. now. It's early, day, but it's getting late early. I'm not sure if that was, was said correctly. It's kind of like the Lakers season. I mean, you can keep saying, Dave, that it's still early in the season, but we're actually at the midway point, and they're seven, eight games under 500, so it's not that early. And right now, we're at the midway point in this match, and uh, turn it over. Aaron Garner. Yeah, go ahead. Let me see yours, Aaron. The gloves. The out, the other side. You get. Okay, cool. Two minutes. Thirteen. There five. will be a. Two minute glove change before the halftime. As we're getting close to that as well, we're going to take a quick time out. We'll be back in just a bit in about two minutes. Stay around. Racefreight.com. Hello, I'm Bruce Fabrizio, inventor of Simple Green. Our non toxic, biodegradable, all purpose cleaner works great for cleaning. It. Thank you.
non-toxic, biodegradable, simple green. It's great for cleaning. For 20 years, the Inner City Handball Association has educated, mentored, and served young people through handball. Young people that participate in the Inner City Handball Association programs have a high graduation rate from high school and continue on to college. Inner City Handball teams are good athletes, good students, and good ambassadors for the sport of handball. We need your help to continue our work. Inner City Handball Association is a registered 501c3 tax exempt charity. Please donate today. Thank you. You're on your way to meet up with friends, but you can't seem to get anywhere quickly. You don't want your friends to be annoyed, so you text. You're on your way. Five seconds is the average time your eyes are off the road while texting while driving. Make sure you get where you're going. Back at the YMCA right, in it. Houston, Texas. My Check name is Dave ball. Vincent, alongside of David Fink. Don't see it. Don't see ball. This is not your dad's it. YMCA, Dave. This is an <laughs> unbelievable no. facility. Okay, 13-5. You think of a YMCA, you think of a swimming pool and maybe a basketball gym, but this, Dave, is state-of-the-art. This looks like where the Tucson, the University of Arizona Wildcats might play basketball. 1475. Tremendous facility here. Slide out. I like how Chip boxed out Aaron Garner there and then slices that ball down the right wall. 514. Second. This is a lopsided Point. ending of the first half for Chip Morales, although he is making a slight Six momentum change. It's just not what his camp was expecting. I know his lovely wife is back home watching this live broadcast, and she certainly is shaking her head. Well, Dave, this is a big moment here for Chip because Trying to get that 15th point, even with a big lead, is a little bit nerve-wracking. It's almost like trying to close out a match. Slide out. If Chip can close the gap to 10, he builds momentum going into halftime. If Aaron Garner scores right now, Chip's in deep trouble coming into halftime. 14-7. I mean, right now, Chip looks like San Francisco against Atlanta in the first half, but remember, Dave, they came back. They'll be playing in the Super Bowl, so maybe Chip can take inspiration from his Northern California roots. Of course, he's not 6'4 and can't run a 4'3", and throw a football through a brick wall like Kaepernick, but... Or run through one like Kaepernick. Mm. Halftime. And now it is halftime, Aaron Garner. I think it's walking. Can you guys change your shirts on the break, please? Three minutes. That's a good call from the seven. referee. We Aaron will have a three-minute break. Back. We'll be back after this uh, quick break here at halftime where we'll have a change of service and then players both changing their shirts. We'll be back in just a bit for Aaron Garner and Chip Morales. Yeah, right here at racerate.com. Stick with us. You're on your way to meet up with friends, but you can't seem to get anywhere quickly. You don't want your friends to be annoyed, so you text. You're on your way. Five seconds is the average time your eyes are off the road while texting while driving.
Make sure you get where you're going. My name is Bruce Fabrizio. In 1975, I invented Simple Green based on three principles. It had to be safer to use, it had to work, and it had to be completely made in America. From generation to generation, Simple Green has been cleaning everything from car engines and tools to kitchen counters and floors. No matter what you clean, indoors or outdoors, clean it with non-toxic, biodegradable Simple Green. My life is full of statistics. Thing is, I could have dropped out of school and become one myself, but I didn't because I had people that believed in me. Here's another statistic. 7,000 students drop out every school day. That's one every 26 seconds. It's time that students know that we believe in them. Inspire a student and share your message of support at boostup.org. Here we go. We're going we're gonna to make some juice. It's going to be good. She's excited. <laughs> a little bit of kale. Please don't put this on line. I'm putting it all over the line. It's wet. It needs something. No, it'll go. Don't break my juicer. Looks good. You ready to try it? Come on, baby. Let's Challenge try. your kids to be active and eat healthy. It's okay. Okay. Like it. right. They might surprise you. Uh, she took another sip. You saw it? Search We Can for more ideas on how you and your kids can get healthy together. Back in Houston, Texas, for the second half of this men's round of 16 match in the last round of 16, scheduled for the day. Chip Morales and Aaron Garner. Chip is one of the elite eight here in Houston. Houston and Aaron Garner said to me yesterday, I got the monkey off my back, finally. I, I qualified, but then I said to him, have you ever tried to qualify? I mean, it was only one stop. I mean, that monkey must have been pretty annoying since March of last year to to this time. Score is 15-7. To which he just squared his jaw, cocked his shoulder just a little bit, and I thought he was going to punch me in the face. Wish he would have. Well, he hasn't been to any other official qualifiers, but he did play in the Nationals, which would have been a qualifier of sorts had he won that round of 16 match, and also at the U.S. Open, which also would have earned him a ranking had he won his round of 16 match. Chip works that ball around the wall. There's a lot of variety in that rally from Chip. Goes to the ceiling and then he goes to a mid-speed two-wall V-shot that just kind of eats Aaron Garner up in the back right corner. 715. Now, Dave, if Aaron were to go on and defeat Chip Morales here mm -hmm. and go into the quarterfinals to face Anthony Celesto, there's a lot of ifs as we watch this rally. I'm not sure that's such a big if. Would, Point. would Celesto have a chance to defeat Aaron? Do, I mean, do you see them matching oh, up? Absolutely. Okay. I mean, Anthony Celesto has beat Sean Lenning. There's no one he can't beat. I think Aaron, excuse me, Anthony matches up well against anyone that he could face. Well, he couldn't beat John Bike yesterday. Mm -hmm. And John Bike said out of the, you know, just the theory of transitive property, I am the number one seed now in this tournament since you couldn't beat me in. Right.
8.15. Surprised yesterday to see Anthony cramping. He's a, just 25 years old, just turned, and he's very fit. So Dave, I'm not sure that cramping necessarily has to do with fitness because I see a lot of very fit guys that cramp and I see guys 15. that maybe aren't as fit never cramping. Well, I, I believe it's just a lack of water. Okay. And, and and you can get over it. Now, Anthony didn't cramp against Sean Lenning today. No. And I believe he hydrated himself properly, but... Point. You have to drink a lot of water. You can remember Dave Chapman's regimen of 16, just eight. flooding his system before uh, an event. With steaks. And oh, you Nina. meant water. Yes. Oh, okay. Point. There's a dig in underhanded paddle into the floor there from Chip Morales, who's not only playing as the so elite the player is. here, but he's also in the Texas State doubles at the number one seed with John Iglesias. Now there's focus. Well, doesn't look like Chip will have to go both ways as that tournament doesn't start until later tonight. He's on his way out of this Get pro out. event. Well, he'll still have playoffs if he loses. Chip can make up points eight quick 17. with the serve down the right. He had an ace earlier. Let's see if he does it again. Cranks it over to the left and a nice paddle. Underhand fist from Aaron. Now point. you see that serve and shoot from Chip Morales. And now he's yelling at himself. This would be a good time for Aaron to call a timeout and cool Chip off. 9-17. I agree. Handball's a, a funny thing though, Dave. You think Chip Morales and Alan Garner would be two of the strongest players in this event having right sparred up. against each other for the last couple of months, but right now Chip looks about as unprepared as I've seen him in a couple of years. Dave, I've been on the wrong end of an Aaron Garner hot streak a number of times, and it's really a helpless feeling. He's overpowering and also able to find the bottom board. And Chip has to end rallies there when he has that kind of opportunity. And two very easy opportunities for Chip, and now a setup for Aaron. Finally, Chip on his fourth setup in that rally ends it with a 28 foot kill. Nine eighteen. Short. Second. Garner just seven points away from advancing to the quarterfinals. Replay, replay, screen ball. Not sure about that call there, Dave. If Chip hit that maybe a little bit too close to his body. Nine, 18. Could have gone either way. Or he could hit it lower. Flattened it out maybe. That's gonna be a big setup for Aaron who elects to go with his left and he. Side out. Gets it in the corner, and I believe timeout there's going to be a timeout or a shirt change score here. Score is 18-9. You hear that score being called from referee Abraham Montijo, who lost earlier today to Andy Nets. And as we look down the bracket, it was Anthony Celesto making headlines today when he defeated number one seed Sean Lenning. Anthony was the round of 16. Uh, excuse me, he is the, uh, the 16th seed here in the round of 16. Yesterday in the qualifier final, Anthony lost to John Bike in a very close one where both of those players were cramping and it looked like that Anthony was going to finally qualify with the WPH and mm -hmm. thank goodness for him he didn't because today as De Des Destiny sees it he goes up against Sean Linney defeats him 25 to 23 John Bike goes up against Emmett Pichot and loses 
and that means that uh, Anthony Celesto now is in the round of eight. Well, remember, Anthony Celesto was two points from being eliminated from this tournament altogether in his first round against Shorty Ruiz, trailed 23-22, had that freak accident where he hit Shorty right in the eye, came back and won that match 25-23, then barely lost to John Bike, and then defeats, of course, Sean Lenning. All of his matches, they've decided by either two or three points. Uh, absolutely amazing. As we get back into play here with Aaron Garner serving to Chip Morales. Now the winner of this one will face Anthony Celesto at 5.15 p.m. this evening, Central Time. And we'll see if the Cinderella story continues. 19 9. to say, Dave, if Aaron's able to win this match would probably be the biggest win of his career to date in singles in pro competition. He's been one of those guys that's been tapped with a lot of talent, but hasn't quite made that breakthrough yet. Short ball, short ball. And Chip trying to sell that, that was clearly on the line. Second. Second serve, Chip still trailing by 10. You know, Dave, we've seen Chip a lot on the webcast where as a great shot from Chip. He's sort of the underdog playing against Nadia Alvarado Jr. or Sean Lenning. Here he comes in as a favorite. He's the hunted. You know, he's the guy that was invited and promoted. He's playing against a guy that's very hungry. And sometimes, Dave, that mentality can be difficult to transition from really going from nothing to lose, as you are when you're the underdog playing a top player, to having a lot to lose. As he knows, Dave, that he doesn't want to lose the qualifiers. He also doesn't want to see his ranking plummet, which it will if he loses this match. This might put Chip into retirement. Mm. Bold statement. Well, we know he will, if it happens, it'll be after Thank you. Alaska. Side out. Not before. Nineteen ten. A lot of shakeups today. Retiring in handballs. Kind of like putting a three footer. It looks easy but it doesn't always necessarily pan out quite as easy as you hope. Side out. Made sense in my head. 10 serving 20. Dave, that Chip needs to develop a left-to-left -left shot off the back wall with his left hand. He hits 100% of his left hand back wall shots back to the right. So as an opponent, you never even have to play for that two-way shot. You always know it's going to come back to the middle of the court to your right hand. Puts him out of position because he's over against the left wall. His opponent hitting a right hand shot. He's got the whole right lane open. He hits it pretty well, but it's always about two feet high and always comes to the middle of the court. like he tried to go inside out on that instead of just taking it down that left wall with the maybe over the top. 10 serving 20. I don't know what you thought there, Dave, but it looked like he was trying to force the ball back down the right. Side out. When he had good footwork and everything, he just decided to go kind of sloppy on us for one shot. Well, I think it was the right shot. I don't think he was as committed to it as he needed to be. 20 serving 10. But earns a quick side out, and he's back in serving at 20-10, just five points now from the quarterfinals. 
make that four points. Chip just hits one in the ground. And now Chip's starting to sag the shoulders and the head is dropping just a little bit. The writing is on the wall. It's actually right underneath the John Egbert sign. John Egbert sponsoring this court. You can see that in the back left Point. corner. But it's a little bit higher than that, but um, <laughs> it's actually, it's written there now. Chip Morales flames out again in the first round as an Elite Eight Pro. Two tournaments in a row. What in the Tommy Little is going on here? Of course, Dave, Tommy Little famously invited to the first five stops of last season, never won one match. Not in the main draw or the qualifier. Chip Morales may be falling in those footsteps. He'll have another chance in Alaska. Another interesting thought John Pike brought up saying that, and, and perhaps you were the first to really say this, is does Anthony Celesto get a free trip to Alaska? Now, it was never discussed, but certainly what he did to Sean Lenning puts him into that realm in a lot of ways that he is sort of an external qualifier. I you believe I did bring it up, and I told Anthony that I congratulated him in that interview on now being invited to Alaska, so Who I might have to actually eat that expense. You might have to pay for it. That's where you have to put the checkbook where the mouth is. Mm. And Chip actually missed hitting that. Didn't think it was gonna make the front wall. And Dave, I would actually give you 100 to one odds here on Chip Morales coming back. Okay. Give you one buck. You have two to two remaining, Chip. All right, timeout, Chip. Scores 22-10. You got one left. Chip Morales taking a timeout. Well, I guess we could go 100 to one for 500 if you put that five on the table. I don't like to bet, because I think it's bad form for... <laughs> <laughs> An yeah. organizational administrator of a sport. You, f you want to? Being fueled by a nonprofit. Okay. Hmm. Love change. So I am officially off the record, Love but change, two officially minutes. there is $5 on the table. Hmm. But that could very well have been for the sandwich that you just ate. We don't really <laughs> know. That's a, good, that's a good point. This five bucks mm -hmm. could be for the sandwich I just ate. Or it might not be. More like not. Mm. It is the race for eight to second season here. Been pretty exciting. Just a completely different feel for this race season compared to last year, which was just sort of like a novelty of people coming out of the woodwork to see what the race for eight was like. This time, it's like they know what to expect, and we're seeing some new faces come in, and that's brought a little of the novelty, but also the, the standard players are back. Dave, do you, you get a sense that this is kind of a, a completely different feel from last year? Or? Well, I think that the feel from last year has just been intensified as we've got great older veterans like John Bike who's still able to qualify, and you've got young guys, Dave, that have really not risen to their potential yet, like Anthony Celesto, who's quickly mm -hmm bust the door down today with his win against Sean Lenny. You've got guys like Aaron Garner who, you know, you and I both know has been a top 10 level player for a couple of years, just hasn't been able to put it together in the big events. And you've got, you know, other guys, Dave, like Emmett Pichot, who was the number one ranked American a couple of years ago, who's now probably going to rise into that top seven after this event. And Emmett Pichot now, speaking of him, has a great doorway to the finals here of this event. He's playing Nadi Alvarado Jr., who he's beat the last two times they've played. Nadi hasn't played in three months. Emmett beats, if he beats him, he'll play the winner of Aaron Garner and Anthony Celesto. That's a semi-final match. Okay, yeah, interesting shakeup. Emmett Pichot, if it's that early round Emmett Pichot from Tucson before he came into Al playing Alan Garner in Tucson, that guy will beat Al uh, Nadi Alvarado today. Mm -hmm. 
That was a great shot from Aaron Garner. Emmett didn't look great today, but started slowly and did what he had to do to win. Probably good for him to get that win under his belt. Shake off some of the rust and get used to the courts. And now Dave Chip not only losing, but losing badly to Aaron Garner. Match point I had an opportunity to ref Aaron's first round match yesterday, Dave, and he played Dustin Van Brunt, who's a collegiate All-American, and Aaron was so spectacular, Dustin only served three point times point in the four. entire match. Wow. I said at that point, Dave, not only is Aaron Garner going to qualify, he could actually win this tournament, and I meant it. One thing I'd like to see Dave from Aaron is more fly killing, more front court play. He lets a lot of balls that just float back, particularly the return of serve, go back to the back wall, letting his opponent get back into the right court position. But it's hard to argue with what he's doing here, just dismantling every guy he's played. This could be it. And it is, he hits it right into Chip Morales and he advances to the quarterfinals, will now face Anthony Celesto, congratulations to Aaron Garner, who's made it far into this tournament, now into the quarterfinals, and Dave making you look really good because you predicted that he was going to make it this far. Mm -hmm. He's going to face Celesto. That's going to be a battable. The winner of that one will face Nadia Alvarado and uh, or Emmett Pashot. We'll have more action a little later on. Now, I know this, this could be breaking news in a way. Um, you are scheduled to be first up in the round of eight against Alan Garner, and you also have claimed that you have a, an injury, a back spasm or back pain that's been recurring. Uh, are, if you're scratching from that, we can make the announcement and then just say we're starting at 4 o'clock Central Time, but if you're going to go through the motions, uh, you know, for whatever reason, you know, y it's your call. So on, on camera here. I'm going to scratch? go through the motions. I'm going to do the best I can to get myself ready to get on the court, I would say the chances are very, very slim. I didn't think I'd be able to play this morning either, though. But, uh, you know, Dave, you've had a bad back, and it's really, there's nothing you can do. I can't turn. I can't even put on my shoes. So, you know, if I can get in the hot tub and maybe stretch a little bit, there's a chance maybe I could play. So I suppose we tune back in at in about two hours' time. All right. 3 o'clock Central it is. That will be, uh, I believe, 2 o'clock in Mountain Time, and then... Uh, one o'clock on the on the west coast so we'll be back more action coming up one o'clock west coast that'll be four o'clock eastern time for dave fink versus alan garner here as we come back live for the round of eight we'll get into the elite eight now here at the r48 pro for dave fink linda manning chris garad uh, and help from omar lemus and ashley moeller my name is dave vincent thanks for tuning in at racefor8.com NFC, AFC, offensive linemen, defensive tackles, quarterbacks, and cornerbacks are all living united to ensure the academic success of millions of kids in our communities all the way to graduation day. But that won't happen without you. So take the pledge at unitedway.org. Make a difference in the life of a child. Suit up like your favorite NFL players and become a volunteer reader, tutor, or mentor with United Way. It's Timothy Green's first day at school. What's in there? He's well, about to fall anything over. Anything he might need. There's a box of tissues on the bottom. It's a band-aid. There's a whole first aid kit, actually. Mom, I can handle it from here. You don't have to be perfect. Have Goodbye. a great day. That's too much pressure. Have the day you have. To be a perfect parent. There are two people in the world who want you more than anything. They'll make some mistakes, but they will love you more than you can ever imagine. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. My name is Bruce Fabrizio. 
In 1975, I invented Simple Green based on three principles. It had to be safer to use, it had to work, and it had to be completely made in America. From generation to generation, Simple Green has been cleaning everything from car engines and tools to kitchen counters and floors. No matter what you clean, indoors or outdoors, clean it with non-toxic, biodegradable Simple Green.